too many buttons with Zoom. All right, so let's get started. Heather was with me on the Zoom the other day, and I swear I can't get it together. Play from start. There we go. Okay, so make it messy. So what we're going to talk about today is using social media to to grow and and really just how to how do I just start taking action steps? And my my kind of tagline that I always say is is live fierce, be free. Because whether I'm teaching nutrition, whether I'm teaching fitness, whether I'm teaching, you know, women like you to, to get started in business, like I am all about how can we just step more into our purpose, step more into doing what we're meant to do. Because I believe when we do those types of things, you know, and we, we, I talked about today on Instagram, like once we stop being scared, and just start taking action that gives us the confidence to, to really step into what we're meant to do. And it just makes life so much more fun. And if, if that's not your end goal, I don't, I don't know what is. So what are our goals today, right? This is our, I'm glad there's all girls. There's, there's just once in a while, it's like a group fitness class. There's always like one guy in the room and yours, but I'm but <laughs> all women on here. So be like girl power. Um, but today we're going to talk about you know, how do I even start to identify what is my niche or niche? You may have heard that word before. What is my target market? Who is the woman or the girl or the specific person that I'm trying to help? And your USP, so your your unique selling proposition. Like, what makes you different? Because as you can see on here, there's 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 so many dietitians in, in the world. There's so many nutrition fitness professionals. Like, what's going to set you apart, right? What's going to make somebody want to work with you? versus, you know, Sally next, next door. Um, secondly, we're going to talk about how to establish credibility on your social media, right? Because maybe you're stepping into this place where you're, you're starting to think about, look, I, I want to look at this as a business. Like I want to start monetizing things. I want to, you know, be seen as a professional. And so how do we do that in the right way on social media and really start to set ourselves apart to be known as that professional? Because as all of you are, or are about to be, you're an expert in some sort in your field. And so how do we help our audience or our following, whatever it is to, to recognize that. And then third, we're going to talk about why growing your email list is a must. And this is going to be totally, it may feel like ah over the top for you, but this is an important piece that is not fun, but people need to understand. And if you want to have longevity, if you want to really, you know, reach out with people, it's, it's not just about social media. And we'll talk about that too. So those are my three, three checkpoints. I'm all about like, let's check the box. Let's take action steps. And I already see like some heads down and, and notes. So there's, there's two types of people, right? There's two, there's the first type that writes things down that takes notes. It's going to do something with this hour. Or there's a second type who's like, la la la, I'm just going to sit here and like drink my coffee and I'll think about this more. But like, you guys are here. You are the people that signed up and showed up. I don't know how many people registered, but there were a lot more than registered, but you guys are here. So like, give yourself a pat on the back there, right? Ah, okay. So my story, you may know my story if you followed me in social media for some time, but you can be the jack of all trades or the master of none. And this really took me a long time to understand because when I was in, actually like in Christina's shoes not too long ago. So I started at Purdue. I was doing personal training, but I also wanted to do group fitness, but I also wanted to train other instructors. But then I also wanted to be a dietitian and I wanted to do all these different things. And I realized I took a step, step back when I started to really focus on my business. I thought people don't even know what, what they want to come to me for, right? They look at my page and they go, well, is she just a group fitness instructor? I didn't even know that she does nutrition. And, and so when we, I mean, think about it. If, if anybody has a house, I don't know why I think of this example. I don't own a home. I still rent, but you know, if you're getting ready to paint or you're getting ready to, you know, design your house and you go to, let's say the paint store, right. And you look at all these different shades of colors, your brain is like, I don't, I can't even make a decision because there's too many options right? Versus, you know, or let's say you're going out to eat, right? You're like, I don't know what to choose. But if someone goes to you and goes, okay, we can go have Mexican or Italian, which do you choose? Doesn't that make it so much easier for you to decide what you want and, and what it is that you're looking for? I mean, the reality is there's, there's just so much that we can help people with, but we've got to just pick one and recognize that 
it doesn't mean that you'll be doing that thing forever, but you have so many talents, you have so many skills. And so are you going to be okay at everything or do you really want to narrow in and, and be great at one thing? And so I learned that the hard way. So this takes more time. This takes more soul searching, but um, it's really important to focus on because it's so easy to get distracted by all the different things that we can do. So I, I love this quote, you know, or quote or saying, our purposes in life are many, but it starts with a decision to do something that matters, right? My friend, I, I talked to my one best friend, Lauren, if you listen to our podcast, well, she used to do it with me, but she's been kind of like my go-to, my one person who were always bouncing off business ideas. And I told her, oh yeah, well, I'm doing this call. And she said, why are you doing that? <laughs> because she knows me. She's like, you don't need another thing. Like you should not be mentoring people as well. And I'm like, I know, but I feel like I just need to at least do this one call. If people can get something from it and get them started in the right direction. Awesome. You know, whatever, but right. Like that's a good reminder of, in recognizing that you are going to have so many purposes in life, in your career, in your path. I mean, you were meant to do a lot of things. So do, try not to get caught up on the fact so often we're like, is this the thing, right? Like for me, I, I, when I started off, you know, doing nutrition, like one-on-one -on -one nutrition coaching, I thought, okay, well, I, I can only focus on, um, you know, women who are in their twenties. And then I realized like, I've got to kind of just, just move. I need to just move. I need to just take, you know, this client who I can help and then evolve from there and, and not getting stuck in that perfection of nailing everything down. So what I want you to ask yourself, and maybe you write some, some brainstorm down right now, but how, so how do I start to identify who is it that I want to help? You can start by asking yourself, you know, what are you known for? And if, if you're already practicing or you're already kind of put yourself out there on social media, what are questions that, that you're constantly getting asked? What are things that people are constantly coming to you for? So for me, when I first started my business, I found that so many people were asking me about you know, nutrition. And when I was kind of at this crossroads of like, do I focus more on fitness or do I focus more on nutrition? And I thought, oh my gosh, people right now in that moment needed more help with nutrition and, and stop obsessing over the scale. So ask yourself, what have you figured out? What's a struggle that you've overcome? So myself, for example, you know, my story is I've been over, I had, I gained a bunch of weight when I came back from studying abroad and I kind of developed this disordered relationship with food, with exercise, with my body. And so something I overcame was learning how to get to a place where I felt confident in my, in my own skin, where I didn't feel like I had to exercise for two plus hours a day, where I, I didn't feel that, you know, stress and obsession to micromanage everything I put in my mouth. So for me, that was something that I figured out and, you know, pairing that with, you know, science and nutrition and intuitive eating that I realized, okay, that's something that I, I can help people with. Um, another thing, you know, what's the most common questions that you get? Let's say if you're, you know, a fitness professional and a lot of people are asking, you work with a lot of moms and a lot of moms are asking you, how do I exercise when I have no time? Um, maybe in your field, people are always asking you, what's the best thing to eat before a workout? What's the, you know, what's the best timing to eat? Maybe there's a specific nutrition question or a specific fitness question that is constantly coming up. Um, and then number three, what do you wish you would have known? Like where you're at now. So if you've identified that thing that you've struggled with or that thing that you figured out in your own personal, you know, fitness or nutrition journey, what do you wish that you would have known that would have made it so much easier? So for me, for example, you know, when I came back and, and was starting to have that really disordered relationship with food and exercise, oh my gosh, I wish I would have known about intuitive eating at that time. I wish I would have known that I didn't have to like convince myself that a diet wasn't a diet. Like I wish I knew that I didn't have to spend two hours in the gym. Like I wish I knew there was another way, but for me and at that time, in that moment, in that season, that was all I knew. I wish I would have known that I didn't have to track everything I ate on my fitness belt. Right. And so, so walking yourself through, and it doesn't have to even be that big. I think so often we think, well, what I'm going to do, this took a long time for me to get my head out of was I 
have to change the world tonight, <laughs> right? And like, I've got to make, I, I, it has to be big. It has to be like mind blowing. But the humbling reality is that whatever you want to do, there's somebody out there doing it, right? Like it doesn't have to be mind blowing. And if, if we want people to take action, if we want people to, you know, quote unquote, see results, they've got to have small wins, right? And so often what I was doing for a, lot of, a long time is I was trying to sell people these like, you know, 12 week programs and all right, well, well join me for this or like what I do with nutrition coaching now, I, I would say, okay, well, you know, sign up for this six month program. And it's like, people aren't ready for that, right? Somebody in my shoes needs to know what is intuitive eating, right? <laughs> they don't even know what that is. And here I am trying to sell, you know, a six month package and they don't even know what nutrition coaching is. They don't even know why they should be strength training or whatever it is, right? And so what do you wish you would have known on your journey that would have made things a hundred times easier? Maybe it's, you know, how to save 20 bucks grocery shopping. Like, like if, you, if you're thinking of something, think smaller, think smaller, 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 because the reality is when we can get somebody to get that small win, um, when we can get somebody to, for example, let's say not weigh themselves for a week and, and they can recognize how good that makes them feel and they didn't gain weight. And they, you know, have more trust with their body or if we can get somebody to get through, you know, one week of workouts and they go, oh my gosh, what does that do? That gives them confidence, right? That gives them confidence in themselves, but also it gained trust with you, right? They kind of go, oh, okay, well, maybe she was right. Okay, maybe I'll listen, right? And listen to the next thing because, We've got to meet people where, where they're at. Does that kind of make sense? Nod your head yes or shake your head no. And you may be like, I hope, I hope right now, the goal of today too is I hope sometimes just by talking through things and thinking through things, like I hope just light bulbs come off, right? You just write things down because that can be pretty powerful. So define your life first. So the program I talk about, Marketing Impact Academy, it's the woman who created it. Her name is Shalene Johnson. She created turbo kick and Pio and all the different workouts that, that I fell in love with, but now she teaches business. And so she always talks about defining your lifer because if you're going to be in business, right? What you guys do, we need to stop separating the two, right? We like to say, these are all these different hats I wear, but if you're going to go into business for yourself, like you are the brand, right? And so how can we help people with what we're going through, knowing that it may change? So for example, right now I'm te I, you know, teach people, help them through intuitive eating and, you know, working out and, and building muscle and blah, 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 all these different things. But one day I might, you know, want to help women who just had a baby, right? I hope to have my own family one day. I may want to help people through, through that journey. And so what I know now, who I want to work with. So I want you guys to write this down, define who it is that you want to work with, Right. For me, I related to somebody who was like five steps behind me, right? So when I first graduated college, for me, it was, okay, how can I help that girl who's like a freshman and really fearful that she's going to gain the freshman 15 and that she, you know, is going through this weird season of her life. Like I really, really pinpointed to that was the girl who I was trying to help. And now that's kind of evolved. And so who is the one person? It's really helpful if you can like picture them. Like when I actually think of my life for now, there's one gal, her name is Kristen. I'll tell you this. I met her at Purdue. She came to all my group exercise classes. She was always the front row and she listens to the podcast and she lives in the Midwest and she's, you know, in her twenties. She's, she works as a teacher, but she also has this like fire in her where she, she wants to do more. And like, she's always trying to be better. And she's, you know, she's always pushing herself with fitness and nutrition, even though that's not like, she, she never wants to have that job. Like she never really wants to, you know, become a dietitian, but she's just so interested in it. And so, but she really struggles because, because she is such a go-getter that she struggles with that mindset because she's so hard on herself because she, she has this perfectionist mindset. And so she struggles with, with the, with the fear of, well, if I were to let myself eat whatever I wanted with intuitive eating, I'm going to gain weight. And if I can't, right. And so she struggles with that. So can you pinpoint like, who is he or she, how old are they? You know, what kind of things do they, do they listen to podcasts? Do they read books? What types of books do they, do they read? Um, 
where do they hang out on social media? Are they more on Facebook? Are they on Instagram? Are they on YouTube? Right? Like, let's say you were in, um, I'm saying homegrown. What's HDTV? Like, you know, like remodeling. Like if you're into that, that would make sense more for you to hang out on, let's say YouTube, right? Because you're you always YouTubing how to restay. I, I clearly am not, <laughs> not in that field. Like you're like, think about that. And it's really easy if you're trying, if you're struggling, like who is my life or who is the person that I want to help? Think back to that thing that you struggled with that area where you found that, I just wish I knew that thing. What was, what was your journey? Who were you, you know, five years ago or when you were struggling that? Um, and it really boils down to, you've got to identify like, why, why do you want to help that person? What is it that, what was your pain point of the thing that you struggled with? Because when we can get really clear on our why, like why you're so passionate about that, that comes through and that comes through on social media and people can, people can see that, right? Okay, so talk, let's talk about what makes you different. What makes you different? I'm gonna unmute you because I want to hear. What makes you different? Shout it out. I'll go first. So I don't. This is where I kind of struggle because, um, as a registered dietitian student, I only follow RDs or RDs to be on that page, and. I only follow people that follow the same mindset as me, where they're, you know, anti-diet culture, intuitive eating, health at every size, weight inclusive. So obviously in that space, it is constantly the same things um, that I'm seeing. So as a, as a student, it's like, okay, well, I don't have the RD title, so I can't really speak. It's hard to like gain trust that way. And I'm not an intuitive eating counselor yet. So it's also hard to build, you know, talk about intuitive eating because I don't feel right. You know, I should let the professionals do it. Mm -hmm. So this has been a struggle with me making, you know, finding what makes me different with my posts. Mm -hmm. Well, what you just said is, is a tricky space to be in, right? Because when we get, what happens when you're surrounded by all these, you know, experts, have you guys ever heard of imposter syndrome, mm -hmm. right? Where you feel like, oh, I'm not qualified and you're, you get, it's very easy to compare yourself to what other people are doing. And so maybe that means, you know, filtering what you follow. Right. And, and yes, while you don't have the, the credentials behind your name yet, think about that person you're trying to help. You know more than they do, which technically that makes you an expert, mm -hmm. right? You can solve a problem. You can help them in some way. You, so when you have that, I mean, this is like what I say with clients, right? You, when you have that, cause you're not perfect. You, are you thinking more one-on-one -on -one or just like in your message and social media or both? <laughs> what do you mean one-on-one? -on -one? Like one-on-one -on -one client? When you say like, well, I don't have, I should leave that to the professionals. I don't have the credentials yet. Do you mean like more in your message on social media or do you mean like in working one-on-one -on -one with a client? Uh, well, uh, on social media, well, I, I don't work one-on-one -on -one with clients, mm -hmm. but yeah, on social media, um, just because I don't want to, you know, just like you would never um, provide health advice if you're not a registered dietitian. That makes sense. But you can still provide education, right? Like you can provide mm -hmm. general, general education. And what's different too is, is if you're not working one-on-one -on -one with clients yet, you're just sharing information. You're, you're saying, here's the resources. This is where it's come from. This is why it's credible, credible, right? Because that's why people, then that's a way to gain trust because people know that when they come to you, they're getting evidence-based nutrition. They know it's going to be not diet focused. And so you yeah, don't need to, I, right? You know, but yeah, I get what you're saying. And I, I mean, I struggled with disordered eating too. So I think I, I put a lot of my personal story mm -hmm. into my post and say, yes, I'm not a professional yet, but I have gone through what you may be going through. You have the experience and that I think you just nailed it right there. That's something that makes you different right? You, when eventually you have clients or you have people following you who you're trying to help, you can go, I've been where you've been. 
I've walked in your shoes. I know how you feel. Right. And you could have empathy for them. So maybe that's what makes you different. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think just too, even though, like I said, there's other people doing what you're doing. Remember, nobody does it. Nobody teaches or nobody talks the way or delivers a message that you do. And the more that you can step into who you are, right. Mm -hmm. and, And your authenticity, people relate to that more. Right. Versus trying to, trying to mimic what somebody else is doing on social media or do it the way they do it. Like, there's nuances and ways that you talk and the ways that you share your story and the messages you, you put out there that people will resonate more with. Yeah. Anybody else? Have you identified like what, what makes you different or you're like, I don't know. That's why I'm here. <laughs> well, for me, so for me, this is kind of what I tell myself. So what makes me different while yes, there's a lot of people who do it, do what I do, what makes me different is I am a fitness professional and a, and a dietitian in a fitness setting, right? I work with a lot of people who are active, and, but I don't push diets. I don't push a lot of what the fitness culture does. So that's what makes me different as I take that, that non-diet, that countercultural approach. So it doesn't always have to, again, don't think big. It can be small. What is something small? that makes you different. Maybe for, you know, like fitness instructors teaching classes, like what makes your pio class different from somebody else? Right. My, my best friend, she doesn't teach as much yoga anymore, but she was a yoga instructor. And something that I just loved and her students loved is at the end of every single yoga class, she always ended with a quote. And like, that was her thing that made her different. And so that seems so small, but I really think that was a, that was a minor, but big reason why many people would sign up at the beginning of a session they'd sign up for her class versus you know somebody else's because they're like oh, I've got these two yoga classes but what makes Paulina's yoga class more memorable a better experience than somebody else right so again you don't have to have that answer now but think about that what makes me different it doesn't have to be mind-blowing it doesn't have to be you know life-changing. All right. So let's, let's like talk actual right now. You're starting to kind of brainstorm, like what, who do, is it that I want to help? What is the problem that I'm trying to solve? What makes me different? Right. And when I say your unique selling proposition, that's your, you know, that's your, what makes you different, right? What do you have to offer? And, and when you get stuck with that, think of somebody else who's doing what you're doing. What makes you different? What would make somebody, you know, choose working with you over another, you know, non-diet dietitian or another fitness class, you know, or let's say you're, you're doing like Heather's teaching fitness classes online right now. Okay. You could take any pio class, but with me, when you take pio class, I'm also going to add you to a Facebook group where we share, you know, accountability and I show bonus, you know, how to do better, do workouts, right? Like what extra value can you add? What, what are you going to do that goes above and beyond and over delivers, um, from, from you versus somebody else? Right. Because like a big box gym, who's also doing virtual classes or also doing, you know, virtual whatever, they're not, they're not talking one-on-one to the people. They're not, you know, providing that, the extra connection of community. Okay. So let's talk about cleaning up your social media. So everybody, if, if you're not on your phone, like pull up your phone and like open up your, your Instagram or your Facebook or wherever you hang out and we'll, we'll look at it. But first of all, you got to pick one or two. This is something else else I tried to do early on. And it was like all over the place. I tried to blog. I tried to YouTube, go to my YouTube. You will see some awful videos. I did Periscope. I did podcast. Like I tried to be on every single social media platform. And what happens with that is that you're just hit or miss all over. Right. And so rather than focusing on trying to be all of all of these platforms, can you pick one or two and get really good at those? really try to understand, really try to connect, show up on one or two. So for me, it's Instagram and podcasting. Those are the two that I am the most consistent with because what that does for me is it it helps me focus, but it also helps, you know, people, my audience. Am I still recording? I think so. Did it say I'm still recording? Yes. Okay. I just like had this fear. I've had that happen a couple of times podcasting. You like, or halfway through and you're like, oh, I didn't go Google. Okay, so 
for me, it's Instagram and podcasting. Those are the two that helps me to consistently show up. I know every Monday a new podcast gets released. I'm showing up on Instagram stories every single day, but that, that helps me focus, right? And as you grow and scale, then you can, you know, batch, batch create content, upload them to both, but just pick one or two. Otherwise it gets really overwhelming. Um, and how do you pick one or two? Well, just like we talked about, where is the person that you want to help? Where are they hanging out on most, right? Like, let's say it's, or let's say you were a dancer. Uh, you might hang out more on TikTok, right? Because there's a lot more dancing on, does anyone know what TikTok is? Oh, don't download it if you haven't already. It is addicting. There, there are such good dancers on there and it's a fun platform, but like, it doesn't make sense for you to hang out on there if that's not where, you know, if it's mostly young people on there. So thinking about that. Um, number two, okay, open up the platform where you're on. What does your headshot look like? I know that is so basic, but is it a picture of your dog? Is it a picture of you and your kids, you and your husband? Like if this is going to be, if you're going to start to treat this like a business, it's got to be your face, right? Because that's what people see when they open up. Um, you know, what are you posting pictures of? What's somebody's first impression when they go to your, let's say Instagram, can they tell, oh, she teaches fitness and nutrition, or do they see, you know, like pictures, I'm looking at my, you know, do they see pictures of a lot of pictures of like my niece and nephew, and then they're confused. And so ask yourself, what is somebody's first impression? And you could even go a step above with this and you could you know, ask a couple close friends or ask, you know, some family members and, you know, say, Hey, when you go to my page, what do you think of first? What do you think I do? Ask people who will give you honest feedback, right? Because, you know, if you're going to separate, I, I believe in just having one, I believe in, in driving everything to your business account, because that's what I have text messaging for. I can send my family pictures, you know, private family pictures and sprinkle them in on social media, but people following me on social media for fitness and nutrition, right? I'll sprinkle in personal stuff, but they don't follow me for, you know, tips as being an, an aunt, right? And so it doesn't make sense. They don't know who my niece is. So I really shouldn't be posting a ton about my niece because that's not why people are following me. Yes, it's cute. She's adorable. I would, I would love to post pictures of her every day, but like, that's not why people are following me. And so when you ask yourself before you post something, why are people following me? If, if they come to just see these first few pictures, I feel like, cause I put, of course I posted pictures of her today. You know, are they seeing a mix or what all are they seeing? And so for me, when I kind of started to pivot, when I really tried to step into my, you know, role as private practice as a dietitian, I thought, oh my gosh, all I'm posting on social media is fitness. People don't even, they know I'm a dietitian, but they don't really even know what I do because all I'm posting are fitness videos. So no wonder I'm not getting anybody reaching out to me with nutrition questions because all they see me post about is my instructor trainings, my workouts. And so it's confusing for the outsider or somebody who just stumbled upon my page. So ask yourself that, you know, what's somebody's first impression. And then number four is accessibility. How easy is it for somebody to get a hold of you? I know that sounds silly, but simply in your, like in your bio, right? And whatever bio it is, do you have your email? Do you have a contact form? Do you have like, how easy it for, is it for somebody to set up a call with you or to, you know, reach out to you if you have a question? Because we have short attention spans, right? There is so, there are so many distractions that if, if somebody has to click too many links to figure out how to find you, the, forget it, they'll, they'll move on right? And so make it simple. And so let's say, for example, you want people to sign up for your class, or maybe you're doing, um, you know, you did a blog post, or you have something, uh, we're going to talk about this in a little bit, like something free that you can deliver people, right, to add value to help them with that problem that you first told them about. How easy is it for them to find it? How easy was it for you to sign up for this, this webinar, right? I posted exactly where it was. I, I posted the link. I didn't say, you know, like on Instagram, you can't click links, right? And so if I had posted in my feed, like, hey, go to this website, and it was this confusing website, how many of you would have like looked at it from your phone, then gone to your computer and typed that? It, like, you wouldn't have done it. <laughs> it sounds so silly, but that would have been too much of an extra step that you would have been like, eh, not where I, 
on to the next thing, distracted. So make it simple for somebody to get a hold of you or for somebody to reach out with a question or connect or, you know, whatever it is that, that looks like to you. Okay, so social seating. I got this from the Marketing Impact Academy, which, like I said, I'll talk about at the end. And so what she talks about, what I'm doing today is basically I'm pulling a lot of things that I learned, I've learned from that and I'm giving them to you straight from her, her thing. So social seating. So what does your bio look like? You know, if you are, you know, quoting yourself, let's say like, for example, if I'm telling, saying, telling everybody I'm a non-diet dietitian, am I putting that across all social media platforms that I'm on? Have the same social media name wherever you're at. So I believe in using your, your name because it makes it easy, right? And then if you ever want to pivot, like you're your name, you're who you are, and it's not a big deal. But is it consistent across all platforms, right? Because it's confusing if let's say you're on Snapchat and you're like, well, my name's Katie Hake, but um, I'm Turbo Girl on Instagram, but actually go on Facebook and I'm, you know, dietitian girl. It's confusing. And so again, how streamlined can you make it? Can you make your bio consistent so that you're what you're known for? And in Instagram, actually, um, when look at you, you should all look up your name. Hold on, let me see if I can pull it up. Right. So if I pull up my name on there's a way that you can change your name, right? Like your title. So that makes it easy, right? Let's say somebody stumbles upon your page and they go, oh, she's a non-diet dietitian or, you know, she's a non-diet dietitian to be, or she's a, you know, weight loss specialist, you know, whatever it is, or she's a fitness instructor, something specific, right? That might look different to you, but make it easy, make it easy for people to find you. And that goes along with your brand image across all platforms. Can you have some sort of cohesiveness, right? Whether that's certain colors, whether that's, you know, you post the theme of what you post about is, is really similar. So again, try to pick two, but you, that doesn't mean you can't have a presence on all, you know, all social platforms, but try to keep it consistently. Um, frequency, right? Like I said, pick two, show up daily. Um, there's obviously different, you know, algorithms and like lots to learn about each specific, but, you know, let's say Instagram is your thing. Okay. Well, get really good at Instagram, show up there daily, twice a day, show up in your stories, like use all the, the, um, features that are on each one, uh, be a business, right? Like I talked about, you know, I love this quote from Christy. Does anyone know Christy Wright? Like Dave Ramsey, Dave Ramsey people. So she's a, a speaker and this always resonated with me once I heard it. She said, stop calling it your little, this little business. Stop calling it this little thing, right? Because it, that's such, such a mindset shift of saying like, oh, I just, yeah, I have this little thing. And it's like, but really deep down, I'm telling myself like, this is a business. Like I want to eventually full-time be able to focus on, you know, my, my one-on-one -on -one coaching people, teaching fitness classes, like I'm taking it seriously. And so that's a mindset shift of, are you taking it seriously? You know, how are you showing up? Because that builds your credibility on social media as well. You know, when you start posting in a way that you're positioning yourself, speaking as you are the professional, as you are the expert on whatever topic you're talking about, people start to look at that differently, right? It, and they go to your page more for education versus just entertainment, which we'll talk about in a second. Um, you know, and minimum posting on secondary platforms. So like, for example, I, my two that I focus on are Instagram and podcasting, but I still have a, somewhat of a presence on Facebook just in case somebody finds me there. I'm there, right? Uh, batch creating content. Have you guys ever heard of batch creating or have you stumbled upon that word at all? So essentially what that means, you know, and you're all busy people, right? And this isn't your primary thing is can you set aside, you know, one day, you know, a couple hours a month or whether it looks like in a week, let's say Sunday night, you sit down and you go, okay, this is what I'm going to post about Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So that way there's really thought behind it because I don't know about you how many times I sit down and I go, hmm, what should I post about today? Hmm. <laughs> right. And then there's a loss of cohesiveness. And so again, if you're going to start treating this like a business, be intentional about what you're putting out there and, and take some time beforehand. And it makes it so much easier to then look at a bigger picture, right? Like what, again, then you go back to the beginning, you go back to 
what is my goal? Like, what do I want to help people with? What do I want to be known for? And then you can start putting out content, putting out, you know, education, whatever it is based on that problem. Right. And then it kind of starts to come full circle with that person that you're trying to help. Then they'll, they're going to be more clear at hearing your message. Um, and then of course, automation, like anytime we can automate things and make it simpler, um, you're more efficient, right? I'm like all about working smarter, not harder. So for example, there's, and I, I forgot to post these in here, but I can email them out. Some of the, you know, social media planners that you can use, or, you know, like for example, how I can just share with you how my podcasting works. Um, for me, the only way that podcasting works is by me delegating. So what I do is I know that I have to submit a, a podcast episode that I just record from my iPhone. <laughs> I record it from my iPhone. I upload it to Dropbox and I, I message my um, editor and she knows then, right? Cause we've created the system. She knows then to go into Dropbox. She does the editing and then she posts it. And so it's like this beautiful system that makes it easy for me to show up because I know like that's the system, right? And so what can you do to automate things? Whether it's, you know, you set a reminder in your phone to post, every day at, at 12 o'clock, you know, or, um, you know, there's, you can schedule posts on Facebook. Let's say you've got a Facebook group or, you know, you can, you can take what you're posting on Instagram and schedule it out a week in advance on Facebook, right? Because the less that you have to think about it, I mean, that's a lot of mental energy. Um, it, it can streamline things and it makes it easier. So let's, I love this. Remember the three E's. This is really helpful when you're posting on any social media platform, but ask yourself, is it, edu is it educational, right? Am I teaching somebody something? Am I, you know, teaching them about the nutrients in, in this apple? Am I teaching them about, you know, why it's important to lift heavy weights? Am I teaching them about why they need to eat more and not starve themselves? You know, what am I teaching them? Number two is educational or sorry, uh, entertaining right? Because sometimes we just need to laugh. Like, is it, is it making somebody laugh? Is it making somebody, because that's, that's valuable, right? Making somebody laugh, making somebody smile, um, giving them, you know, a moment to think about something else other than the awfulness of, of COVID and everything. Um, or is it emotional, right? Am I, is my call to action some sort of inspiration or like, I'm touching them, right? And so asking yourself those three E's, but really what it boils down to is whatever you're putting out there, is this valuable, right? Because if it's just a picture of my niece and my nephew, oh, look how cute they are. Cute, but that's not really serving a purpose. It's not adding any value to the people that follow me. It's great for my mom and dad. They love to see it, right? They love to see their grandchildren, but it's not adding value to the people who are following me. And then if I post something like that, there's a disconnect, right? Then they go, oh, wait, who is, who? first of all, they'll go, who, who are these kids, <laughs> right? Cause they don't know them. They just follow me for nutrition and fitness. And so it's not really adding much, much value to them. Um, okay. And then the truth about social media success, wah, wah, this is like the sad part is that it takes time, right? Like, we so often, I mean, again, it's so easy to get stuck in this comparison, but, you know, strive less for the numbers, focus on the connections, because let's say you are building, a, you know, I, again, I'll use Instagram as an example. So you're trying to build your Instagram. Would I rather from my, you know, nutrition coaching business, would I rather have 10,000 followers who are just don't really have anything in common with they're just but they're following so it looks big right it, it, it grows my head and my ego or would I rather have like right now I have 3,000 followers who are highly engaged who, who comment who you know sign up for my programs who jump on my in my webinars things like that like weigh the two what am I chasing because what you should be chasing is more of the connections that you're making the relationships that you're building versus the numbers right? I know many, many, um, you know, dietitians and fitness professionals who have very small social media, media platforms and followings, but run six figure businesses. And so again, it's so easy to get stuck in all that, but 
stop comparing yourself. It's not about that number and it takes time. Like for example, my, my best friend, Lauren, she, I think this month she ended up hitting like 10 K in her, you know, online coaching that she does. She helps people start podcasts, but you look at her social media, she's got like 200 followers. Right. And so it's like, but those 200 followers are people that take action. Right. And so asking yourself, what, what am I doing this for? And, and patience, but, but when you're persistent, when you show up, it's, it's more about the value, right. Than, than the number of followers. Okay. So switching gears a little bit, sorry. Oh my gosh, 10 minutes left. Okay. So why do you need an email list? Um, let me tell you stories. So when I started teaching people fitness, um, I was a, a master trainer for a company called Beachbody Live. So what we did is we took the infomercials that you see on, on TV, like P90X, Insanity, Turbo Kick, Kayo, um, and I would train, basically train the trainers. And it was business. I was in charge of reaching out to companies, filling those trainings, getting people to sign up for those trainings, you know, mentoring those people. Like it was, it was a hustle. And so many of other trainers and myself invested so much time and energy into this business all for, um, we got an email on like a Monday morning that was like, doors are closing. We're done. <laughs> And the reality is on social media, you, Instagram could be gone. Like all your followers could be gone tomorrow. You don't own, you know, the, the rights to reaching them. And so how are you going to connect with people? Um, you need email is, is the one platform, I guess you could say that's been around for years that people still check that it's, it's still performing well. Um, because reality is on it, on social media, your social media could be gone. I know many people who've had their social media accounts hacked, you know, all their content was deleted, all their followers deleted, like it could literally all be gone tomorrow. And so an email list allows you to have people's contact information, right? You can reach out to them in an email, you can follow up with an email and, and there's ways to kind of grow um, that way, right? And, and you know that people who are, who subscribe to whatever it is, let's say, let's say they sign up for an email and, and two, we're easily distracted, right? We get lost on social media, but if you can get somebody to say, for example, like what I did today, right? I said, okay, I'm going to teach you about social media, but if I just did it on Instagram live, like you wouldn't jump on, you would have gotten distracted. But if I said, Hey, I'm going to teach you about social media. You had to then take a step to sign up and then you got an email, right? And so it already started that connection, right? That building, like, I'm going to give you something in exchange for your email address. Um, so it helps to continue to build. And maybe that means you send out a newsletter. Maybe that means, you know, you offer something once a week, but it's, it's important to start building that up. Um, it's not fun, but it needs to be done just for that, that safety net for sure. Um, so there's different types of email lists and, and kind of providers. And again, this might be kind of above your head, but again, I'm, I'm kind of giving you the what, and you'll have to research or I'll give you more resources to the how, but I mean, it can be as simple as having a Google form. Google forms are completely free. Um, you know, you can organize it in a Google Excel sheet, Google docs, like it doesn't have to be fancy. You don't have to pay for these platforms. Uh, MailChimp offers a free email list. I, I can't remember exactly up to how many, but some of them can get pretty high tech, but the key is can, if you can just start collecting emails, right? as in I give you something, let's say it's a free workout, or I give you a PDF on what is intuitive eating, or I give you a PDF of a grocery shopping list, or, you know, something that's going to be that first step for somebody, right? Remember, we talked about solving their problem, giving them, helping them with that baby step. It can help you to build that relationship. Um, ConvertKit is the one that, that I use. I used to use MailChimp. I really like MailChimp. I thought that was a little bit easier, but I'm trying something new with ConvertKit's another one. Um, Constant Contacts one, Aweber, or if you have a website, a lot of websites will have email listings within them. So that's all the techie stuff. Um, and I'm happy to answer questions about that. Are you guys, how are you feeling? Okay. Am I talking too fast? Obviously I get really excited about this stuff. <laughs> um, but yes, email list is very important. So two types of people, right? Hopefully you've learned something today. I hope I've provided like some value. I'm going to leave time for like questions. You just got to jump. 
Like you, you just need to stop overthinking and just jump and just do something, take action, something, you know, and maybe it's charging a small fee, you know, because what, the, what, what's the worst thing that could happen, right? The worst thing, I can't tell you how many things I've put out there of like, sign up for this, you know, this PDF or some sort of education and, and nobody signed up. The worst thing is nobody signs up and you try something new, right? And you've got to just keep experimenting and putting yourself out there and putting, you know, education or a service or, you know, whatever it is that looks different for everybody. And you learn as you go. But the reality is those who take action will have success. Those who just keep waiting to fix it and perfect it will be will not be right. I love this picture. You guys have probably seen this before of like that guy is so close, but he's like, Oh, it's not working. I give up, but you just gotta, you just gotta keep picking away because you never know that one small thing that you didn't think would work, but you tried it anyways and you made it messy and you just did it overnight because you're like, ah, we'll just see. I'll just, I'll just ask who wants to hop on a call. Hey, I'm doing, um, you know, 30 minute calls for $10 walking you through I don't know, whatever it is that you're the expert in, right? And you get one person to sign up. What does that do for you? You go, oh, okay, I can do this. And it builds that confidence. Um, so Mark, I just want to talk about Marketing Impact Academy because part of the reason too, why I wanted to do this and why I want people to do Marketing Impact Academy is because I have had people sign up because I've said, okay, I will mentor you through it. Like I, I want to help people because I think it's so powerful and so exciting and fun. But I've had people who sign up and I say, I'm going to, do I'll do one-on-one -on -one coaching calls. Like I want to help you be successful and they do nothing. <laughs> so I'm like opportunity if anyone wants it, but this is, I just want to show you what it looks like inside kind of the Academy. So it's all online, but these are kind of some of the modules that you go through. So she talks about kind of what we talked about today, you know, diving deeper into discovering what is your thing? Um, you know, what is your, your brand kind of the foundations of business. So I know you guys are, you know, dietitians, and, and that's why I want to help dietitians and fitness professionals specifically, because I know the other nuances of like private practice and specifically this, but, but Marketing Impact Academy gives a really good, like online business foundation, if that makes sense, which is applicable to whichever field that you're in. Um, so she talks more about, you know, how do I decide what is the thing that I'm going to market, whether it's a service, whether it's a, a product, whether it's, you know, a PDF. I mean, there's so many different things that you can do. Um, social media, she talks, you know, about each social media platform, email marketing a lot more. We didn't go into this, but I will tell you right now that if you are not doing video, you should be. Is anyone scared of video? Raise your hand. You're like, uh, I, I get it. Nobody likes to listen to themselves talk, but how do you feel about me talking to you right now? Don't you feel like I feel so much more connected to you. I feel like I know you, you feel like you know me versus just reading a post. And so as much as we hate it, video is, we can tell right away from an instant if we trust somebody or if we like them. Right. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's a faster way to build trust, to build credibility when you can talk to somebody. And again, if you can identify who it is that you want to help, this is what's always gotten me through, through live video or if I'm talking on stories or something is I think of Kristen, I go, I don't care who else is watching this, but if Kristen's, well, I'm just going to talk to Kristen because when we can focus on that one person, we can get so much more clear. We feel more comfortable, right? Just like you're talking to a friend. Don't put on like your news voice or your, <laughs> like, I actually just looked at my, who was looking at my stories. I don't normally do that, but I looked, I'm like, oh my gosh, my, my new husband's, like nephew is watching these stories. I'm like, Oh my gosh, that's so weird. And I, why I, I get in my head of like, Oh, family members or people. Are, I just focus on Kristen because the reality is I, those other people don't pay the bills. Like those other people, they, they don't pay the bills. They don't, you know, put food on our table. They don't pay our rent. So who cares? <laughs> right? Like you just got to put your blinders on and do it. So Maybe that's your action step today. Maybe your action step is like, Ugh, I need to record one video. I need to go live on, on stories and just say, hi, this is me. Happy Friday. Just talk to your, just, it's like you're talking to a friend. Um, don't watch it. Just post it because you'll watch it and you'll go, oh, my hair. Oh, my, my mascara was just post it. Um, okay. She talks about like 
creating content, blah, 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 all that stuff. So uh, it's a lot. And that's why I want to mentor people through it because it's a lot, but the reality is you go, you can go back in. It doesn't mean you have to go through it from start to finish, but the program kind of takes you, what am I, what am I doing now? And how do I get to where I want to be? But anyways, um, it's an investment though. I always tell people that it's, she has a discounted rate. I think it's through June after June, it goes back up. This program is like over, I think $2,500. So it's expensive, but she's doing, because of coronavirus, she's doing a one time, like half, I think it's like 60% off. It's just, yeah, it's normally 2,500, but it's on sale for 997 or 297 and 11 payments. But you can always join if you're like, I hate this and you get your money back. Um, so anybody who signs up, like I want to help people. So does anyone use Vox? Have you guys heard of that? Oh my gosh, it's life changing. So it's like a, a walkie talkie. It's called Vox or Voxer. And it's basically like walkie talkie. And my friend and I, use it all the time because we have a lot more to say than just a text message and it's so it's an easy way to communicate but anybody who wants to go through it probably starting in june i'll be starting kind of weekly calls of just just kind of more like what can we talk about today what can we focus on what are you working on right because i get all these ideas and i get all in my own head but i for me if i can tell somebody this is what i'm going to accomplish this week i'm more likely to do it because then i have to show up next week and tell you yes, I did it or no, I didn't. Right. It's like workout accountability buddies. Like it's one thing to say, I'm going to get up and work out every morning. But if I know my friend's going to be waiting for me at the gym or, you know, the, the only person in class by herself, well, then I feel bad. Right. <laughs> so if I have somebody to hold me accountable, I'm more likely to do it. So just asking yourself, like when fear is coming on and you're thinking about like, oh, I'm scared. I don't know is, am I doing the right thing? Am I saying the right thing? Am I, you know, I hate to even say this, but like, am I in my scope? You, you just got to take action, right? You just got to move forward. You just got to do something. So remember that I love this picture too, of just like, stop comparing yourself to others because you don't know how long it's, it's taken somebody to get to where they are. You know, you don't see all the other ups and downs and, and the, the craziness of, of success. So just take action, do something. Um, so what questions do you guys, how do you feel? Are you like, is there something in particular where you're like, ah, this is where I feel stuck. Was that helpful? Yes. What was your, what was, okay. So let's go around real quick and say like, what is your one action step that you're going to take today based on everything that you've learned? This is my free birthday drink. I'm super excited about it. I think my one action step is just going to get started on something, anything. <laughs> so like what? Pick one. Put it out there. Um, probably on Instagram. Um, do more, um, something more targeted towards nutrition. Okay. So do you have an Instagram, Instagram already? Mm -hmm. So maybe it's like changing your bio to what it is that you want to be known for, right? And like, that's the thing. Mm -hmm. Remember that you can always change it. Like, so don't stress out. It's not like you're forming your business, your LLC. You don't have to like pick anything big. Nothing's in, in stone. And so, like you said, just start putting out something today that's, that's educating people or saying, hey guys, I'm going to start this page. I'm going to start giving you more tips on X, Y, Z. Let me know what you think, right? Just start. Mm -hmm. I love it. Okay, awesome. Who's next? What are you going to do? Um, I think that I'm going to start a um, body image affirmation or an anti-diet culture affirmation um, every Sunday or Monday so that I can create consistent posts. And if anybody needs them, they know they can go to my page and say, okay, I need this affirmation. I'm going to go to Amanda's page and get it on this specific day, this specific time. Yes, yes. Showing, show, like we talked about, showing up regularly so people know what to expect. Yeah, I love that. Um, okay, Heather. Um, okay, so I think I'm going to do um, um, more lives for sure, more talking. Um, <clears throat> and then also probably get rid of the comparison thing is I have to weed out a lot of, like I'm not this person, I'm not that person and feeling really intimidated by it. Did you guys know that you can mute people on Instagram? 
I just found that out. If you, if there's like p certain people you follow who, like, for example, I'll, I'll use myself. There's a gal who I went to school with and she ended up not moving forward to be a dietitian. And for a while, I remember just feeling so, I just, every time I saw her post, so she, her Instagram blew up. She has a huge, you know, nutrition and fitness business now. And I just was so bitter for the longest time because I was like, she, I work so hard and I would get in my head and just, and then I had asked myself, this is not serving me. Like being bitter about this is not, yeah, I want to kind of keep up and see what she's doing, but I don't need to see her posts every day because they are putting me in a negative mind space. It's not helping me. It's not helping her. I, I just need to stop. And so we all have certain people and things that just mute them. <laughs> I think I know who you're exactly who you're talking about. Cause I had to unfollow someone who went to Purdue who blew up very quickly mm -hmm. and who is not on the same page as yeah. But I remember, right? Like you don't know their story and yeah. you don't know what they're going through. You don't, you don't know how many people they have on their team. You know, you don't know how many people are running their social media, how many of those followers are actual, you know, so social media can be so such a mind game. And so that's, I think that's my biggest takeaway is like, stop comparing because there's always going to be somebody who's, who's outnumbering you, but you don't need a big following in order to be successful and, you know, in order to change lives in order to help people. And so if you can focus on helping just that one, that one is going to grow to two. Who's going to go to three, you know, those are the people. So I love it. Okay. How about Christina? If you're not driving. Um, I think I just need to commit to more like batch making because <laughs> everything I do, I feel like it gets good response, but it's just very sporadic. So I feel like if I, I'm always like, oh, I'm going to do that on Monday. And then especially during this time, I'm like, what is Monday? So, um, <laughs> right. <laughs> so Did I, I post yesterday? Like, what is today? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. But like, I listen to your podcast and I think like, oh, it's Monday. Like Katie, like Katie's going to have a new podcast this week. So like, it's just something to look forward to. So I think mm -hmm. knowing that about myself, I'm like, duh, why would I not provide my followers with that same thing? Mm -hmm. One of my favorite apps to use, um, it's called Plan. I use the free version, but what I like about it, so it's called P-L-A-N-N, -N, is you can actually go in there and you can, so what you can even do, I mean, there's a lot you can do, but you can make like, you can upload all your food pictures, you can upload all your fitness pictures, right? Like you can use old stuff that you've already posted about, because think about, do you remember something that somebody posted two years ago? No, you don't remember. And so re <laughs> repurposing content. I mean, again, just think about how can you work smarter, not harder. If you have, you know, content that or posts that did really well a few weeks ago, post them again. People don't remember. Uh, but yeah, I really like it's P-L-A-N-N. -N. There's a lot. Okay, I'll, look, I'll look into that one. And hashtags and all, all that good stuff. Yes. But yeah, creating some sort of system to just streamline things to make it easier for you will help you to be more consistent mm -hmm. for sure. For sure. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for jumping on. Um, you know, I'm like your unofficial mentor. I, like I said, I'm always there. Feel free to voice me, send me a message, whatever. Um, I will send out an email with this recording. And then I'm also going to put a list of, would it be helpful of just some of the apps that I use like for scheduling and things like that? Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll just tell you what they are. You got to do the the homework to YouTube and figure out how to use, how do you use them. Uh, but then I'll also put a link to Marketing Impact. If anybody has questions about that, or you're like, okay, I want to go all in, let me know because I will be your your biggest cheerleader. So I'll send out all that stuff. Um, and yeah, have a wonderful weekend. Good to see your faces. Thank you. Bye.